I injured my foot. Not sure how I did it, but nonetheless, my wife says I have to take a mandatory rest day. So today, we're gonna do a video and go over some of the details of the OPS 1000 transmitter. Hey folks, it's Adam with Outdoor Pet Solutions. And if you're in the market for an underground pet containment system and you're looking for the absolute best, consider the OPS 1000. It's a truly commercial grade fencing system that is designed to train your dog to stay in the yard. It uses real training collars and it's packed full of great features to keep your dog safely contained, such as emergency battery backup, a military grade receiver collar that's fully rechargeable and water submersible up to 500 feet deep. I'm not sure why 500 feet deep, I don't assume your dog's gonna be going scuba diving, but rest assured, the collar can get wet. It has a biothane strap, which means no nylon to stretch over time, and all the locking components are metal instead of plastic. The system can accommodate an unlimited number of dogs. With 30 levels of adjustability, the system can be customized to keep dogs as little as five to 10 pounds, all the way up to the big boys, safely in your yard. Plus, you're gonna get the absolute best underground cable money can buy. It's exactly the same cable that I use in my professional installations, all backed by a lifetime warranty. The OPS 1000 transmitter is the brains of the operation of your dog fencing system. Once you have it installed, you should have a couple of wires that are running from your surge unit up to the transmitter, as well as the power adapter should be plugged into the side so that you have a blue light illuminated indicating that the system is operating properly. We're gonna review the various adjustments and features that are built into the transmitter. We'll start by opening the front cover and we're gonna reference the chart here on the left. This is a status chart. This status chart will let you know if the system needs your attention by changing the status light color here. During normal operations, the status light will be illuminated blue. You'll also have a blinking red dot in the LCD screen here. The reference chart here at the very top shows a solid blue status light with a blinking red dot under LCD display is normal operation. So this is what we want. But if this ever changes to a blinking red and you have a dash that's flashing here in that screen and you hear an audible alarm that sounds like this, it means that the system's wire connection has been severed at some point. To get this alarm to shut off, you can simply switch the alarm volume to the off position here. It will mute the alarm, but it will continue to flash red here in the status light and flash with a dash in the LCD screen, letting you know that the system is still down and it needs to be repaired. If the wire has been cut or damaged out in the yard, you'll want to repair it properly. There is a repair kit link in the description below that will provide you with everything you need to properly splice your fence system back together. You can also flip the power switch to the off position and the entire system will shut down. Please note that the system does not shut down immediately. So give it a few moments to shut down like so. Once you have your boundary wire repaired, you can flip the unit back to the on position and then the system should go back to illuminating a blue status light with a blinking red dot in the LCD screen. Remember to come back to your volume switch and move it to the high position so that in the event in the future, if the wire gets cut or damaged again, you'll quickly know that there's an issue. Working our way down the chart further, if this light changes to solid red, not a blinking red, but a solid red, it's one of two options. There'll either be a letter P illuminated in this screen here. That means power failure to the unit and it's working off of battery backup. So during a power outage, this would be normal. The system will continue to produce a radio signal for you so that you don't lose your dog fence during unfortunate power outages. Once the power is restored, the system will go back to a status blue light and a blinking red dot. And then the last option here on our status chart is this light will change to a solid red, but instead of a letter P in the LCD screen, there'll be a lowercase letter B. If you see the letter B, it's just letting you know that those backup batteries have been used up to a point that they need to be replaced. 
to replace them, it's very simple. Just close your cover and lift up on the cradle and flip the transmitter forward and replace the six double A's that are in the back. Once you replace them with new double A batteries, slide it back on top of the cradle, slide it down so it's locked into place and you're back in business. Moving over to the right side of the transmitter, these are various switches and dials that are used to make system adjustments. We'll start at the bottom. This light gray area consists of the alarm volume for the brake alarm that we just reviewed, as well as the power switch. This white dial here is the field width adjustment. This dial will adjust how deep the field is that's projected off the buried cable that's out in the yard. We recommend a four foot distance from the wire to where the collar begins to react. So this is a fine tuning adjustment knob to achieve that four foot distance. If you have installed more than 2000 feet of cable, you're gonna want to boost the signal because you'll probably run out of field width as you dial this dial up. So to get more field width and a stronger signal off the wire, if you've installed around 2000 feet or more, you're gonna to wanna to switch the booster switch that's located on the lower side of the transmitter. To get to that, just slide it up off the cradle, flip it over. This switch here that's labeled yard has an N and an L. N is for normal size yard up to about 2000 feet, and then L is for large. So if you have more than 2000 feet, you'll wanna slide that switch that's down in that cavity over to the L position. Once you've made that adjustment, you can return the transmitter back to its cradle and slide it and lock it down into place. Now we'll review the dark gray area up top. This area is used to make the adjustments to your receiver collar. This system has 30 levels of correction available in it, but they are isolated in 10 level banks. And this three-way switch here will make that adjustment for you. The first 10 levels are for small dogs the next 10 levels, medium, and then the top 10 levels are for large. So depending on the size of dog you're working with and the temperament they have, you'll want to select the correct position. Details on how to determine which position that should be in is in your gentle approach training packet. So for example, if we're working with a medium dog, we'll want this switch positioned into the medium. The switch over to the left is labeled warning tone. There's an off and on position. If you set the collar intensity level with this switch in the on position, the collar will always administer an audible warning tone. And we suggest that that's the position it should be in so that your dog is fully understanding their new boundaries. But in the event you have a stubborn situation where you want to remove the warning tone and take advantage of the entire field with correction, you'll move the switch over to the off position, then set the collar to the correction level that you want, and there will be no warning tone administered. And then working our way all the way to the top, you have three buttons, a down arrow, an up arrow, and a set. This is where you will choose the level that you're going to. So for example, we're in medium dog, and we're gonna go to level three. Next, you'll bring the collar to the transmitter. Once the collar's with you at the transmitter, make sure the switch is in the position that you want. And for us, we're gonna be in medium, and then you'll illuminate level three. Bring the collar to the top of the transmitter, place it on top, and then hold the set button till the collar turns red. When it begins to flash green, pull it away. It chirps one time, indicating that it took level three. Again, to demonstrate, say you're working with a large dog, move the switch over to large, and you're wanting to go to level five, for example, place the collar on top, hold the set button till the collar turns red. When it begins to flash green, pull it away, and it takes level five in large dog. So that is a complete rundown of the OPS 1000 transmitter. If you'd like to order your very own OPS 1000 and start training your dog to stay put in your yard, click the link in the description and you'll get free shipping. And as always, thanks for watching. Goodbye.